In previous videos I showed you a bunch of ways that limits in multivariable calculus uh, can break, can not work, uh, and can in fact even deceive you or, or, or lure you into a sense of security thinking that you've tried all the different ways, in fact you haven't. Here's a nice limit that actually does work. And I'll show you what it looks like when a limit does work. Um, looking at this, your first instinct may be to multiply by the conjugate so that your denominator uh, eliminates the square roots that's fun and you can go ahead and try that if you like uh, I prefer to first of all try some factoring so let's factor the numerator we'll have the limit as x and y go to 0 0 and I'll factor out an x and I'll have an x minus y over square root x minus square root y and then I'll realize that in fact this x minus y quantity is the difference of squares. Okay, I can actually rewrite this as the limit of x and y go to 0, 0. Please do get in the habit of writing this. Without this, you're not taking the limit. You're just doing algebraic manipulations on an expression. Uh, so x times square root x plus square root y times square root x minus square root y. All of this is over square root x minus square root y. Okay, how did I know to do this? This is just an algebraic factoring trick, an algebraic factoring technique, recognizing difference of squares. So, and, and you can you know double check x square root of x and square root of x is x. Then we've got uh, plus square root of x y minus square root of x y cancels. Then we've got uh, square root y times square root, negative square root y gives us uh, negative y. So x minus y, it's all there. Obviously, the square root x minus square root y and the square root x minus square root y cancel. And this leaves us with the limit as x and y go to 0, 0 of x times the quantity square root x plus square root y. This is a very easy limit to figure out. This is just going to be... Uh, you can directly substitute. In fact, uh, it's 0, 0. 0 plus 0, rather, which is uh, just 0. So this is the limit. This is the limit. Once we have it so that it's just some linear combination of factors, and there's nothing in the denominator messing us up, and there's nothing in uh, there's no domain breaking you know we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero but there's no weird uh, negatives under the square roots um, because obviously X and Y can't be uh, negative that's it we're done if the limit is zero and we can plot this and we can see I've again uh, pre plotted this and I've, I've made the uh, X Y and Z variables all nice and fitting what you should get practice doing and um, I projected it into the xy plane. This is uh, the x-axis down here. This is x equals 0, and these are quantities x less than 0. Obviously, there's nothing there for this graph. And this is the y-axis. Here's y equals 0, and here's everything below. And obviously, there's nothing there. And then if we look at this thing in 3D, we have kind of this curved sort of plane and with this, this cut down the middle. And this cut is, of course, the line y equals x because if y equals x you have zero in the denominator and the whole function doesn't exist but it looks like everything is is very smooth uh, everything there, there's no problems as we approach uh, the origin so that's the limit that's it it works I'll show you one more example and then uh, you should get to practicing a lot of these on your own